tonight presenting up with us, we have Brooke Rickey from the Early Care and Learning Council, who is our training coordinator. Thank you, Brooke, for joining us today. Just a few, um, just a few housekeeping things. Um, we are going to be engaging with you all in the chat, so feel free to respond to some of Brooke's questions using the chat feature. Um, if you have any direct questions for Brooke that you want answered, please um, send those in the Q&A feature, um, just so we can go through those at the right time. And um, if you have any um, issues with technology or any questions, please ask me in the chat and we can get that figured out for you. Um, so, issues with technology during a technology training. We're here to help. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right. So um, let's see. Um, we are working with our interpreter to get her on. So if you are in need of Spanish translation, we will have the Spanish room up and running in just a minute. Um, you can click on the bottom of your screen, you'll see a little interpretation icon. Um, so just give us a minute and we'll get that set up for you. Um, so I will pass it over kindly to Brooke. Thank you, Brooke, for joining us today. Thank you. And um, uh, welcome to everybody that's on. I can't see anybody. Uh, this is a little bit different. We're in a web webinar um, format. I typically train um, where I can see everybody's faces. So I'm looking out into cyberspace, which is fine, um, but we will be able to answer your questions um, through the chat box, um, as Alyssa said. So first, I'm going to begin by having you guys sign into the chat box with your first and last name. And if you have an Aspire ID, um, using your Aspire ID so we can upload that um, so you get credit, credit for this training. Um, so I'm going to give you a moment to sign into the chat box right now. And um, if you do have Aspire, um, the credit for the course will be automatically uploaded. Um, and Alyssa will also be sending out a certificate um, as well. So you'll have y'all both. So great. Okay, I see everybody talking into the chat now, so that's great. If you don't have your Aspire ID number, we can look it up as well, so don't, don't worry. Okay, so a little bit about this workshop as you guys are signing in. Um, all of uh, the trainings that we do through the Early Care and Learning Council is funded by the OCFS, um, so hence why it's, it's free. We also currently run a management training series, which is currently for child care center directors. Um, and those trainings run free, it's for management staff. And um, there'll be more information going out in regard to the 2022 series. If you are interested in um, getting on our mailing list, you can also write um, in the chat box or at the end, um, we can ask, we'll take a moment for you to be able to provide your email and we can, um, we can add you to our list as well. Um, so a little bit before I start going, I just wanted to give you a brief background about myself. Um, I've been with the Early Care and Learning Council for nine years, training for nine years. Um, a little bit uh, prior to the Early Care and Learning, I've been working with children my whole life um, through every entity you can think of, um, uh, after school to um, assistant teacher floater, then te head teacher, and then I was assistant director, and then I was a director for 10 years prior to coming to Early Care and Learning Council where I am now trainer. Um, so I have a lot of knowledge in regard to the children aspect, um, but actually trying to switch your focus on how to, um, how to get more into the technology world um, because when I was a daycare director, everything was paper and we didn't have as many um, apps and things to go to. So I had to do a lot of research um, to find out some of these things. And actually I have three children of my own and some of the children that I have in my, uh, my children in their daycare facilities use some of these things. So it's always great to 
have new, be up on new and improved technology. So a little bit about the learning object objectives for today's training. We're gonna analyze and um, sample websites, which actually the sample websites are gonna be your own. So since we are doing this in a webinar format, I'm gonna give you the opportunity to be able to, um, you can minimize your screen and be able to pull up the internet if you can. If not, you can take out your phone and do the search through your phone um, and test your own, um, if you have a website. Um, or you're look at a Facebook page and um, we'll be able to kind of play around with that. Um, you'll learn a little bit more along the way. We're also gonna identify technological strategies for ways to recruit new staff. I wanna hear how you currently are recruiting staff and then I'll tell you other entities on how you can search for staff online or not even online. We always, we kind of think outside the box as well. So not just online there. We're also gonna use and examine tools for parent and teacher communication. Um, and then we're gonna discuss ways to use social media in order to improve our marketing communication strategy. So, like I said, we're gonna look at websites and website optimization, um, Google AdWords. Um, if you don't know what AdWords are, you, you will by the end of this training. So that'll be good. Um, ways to recruit new employees and SMS text alerts, I talked earlier about parent-teacher communication apps and the different um, social media platforms such as Facebook. So websites, all right, before we start websites, I'm gonna go back for a second, sorry about that. So using the chat, I wanna know, what are some challenges that you face out there when it comes to social media? So type in the chat, what are some challenges? All right, some answers. Do you want me to read them all for you, Brooke? Yeah, go ahead. All right, so we've got trying to get parents to engage on Facebook. Not everyone is on social media. Um, someone else controls the page. Finding time to do it, absolutely. Um, mm -hmm. Some parents don't want their children on social media. Um, reaching the right people, how to engage. Absolutely. And we're not necessarily talking about putting, um, having children on social media. This is utilizing social media to enhance the, the, the run of your business, right? I mean, we will have talk about some ways to share photos, but this is mainly how, how to enhance your business operation. Having people share posts. Okay, I see it. I have a, yeah. Having people share posts, yet balancing social media without yep. somehow feeling or sounding pushy. All right. Yeah, and th there is a generational gap and um, we are aware of that. And this is where I always encourage those with the generational gap to be able to, if you can, um, recruit your, if you have staff, recruit your younger staff to then, you know, um, help you out and do parts of this. Um, and um, we do come across that all. If you don't have that opportunity, then there's a lot of uh, people and things out there you can find to be able to help you. So, and we can do that. And hopefully by the end of this, you'll learn a few more things. So typically when we're in person and we're, we're gonna talk about websites, right? We want to know what website builder do you currently use? So do you have a capability or do you have access to who built your website for you? If you even have a website. So, okay, I see it. So you use Squarespace. Great, exactly. So what else, what other platforms do you use to build your website? Wix, but somebody, but somehow pay GoDaddy as well. Okay, Vista. Google Sites, great. So you guys are aware of the website builders. Sometimes I do have folks in my trainings that don't have a website. And so this is just to give some more, more information about what types of website builders are out there. So like we said, and I, I see a lot in the chat box already. Hey, Brooke, I'm, I'm so sorry. One quick thing. Um, just one, I see um, some of the posts um, from the chat box are sending just to um, the, the four of us on the screen. 
Um, when you go in and type in the chat box, when you click, go down to click to and then click everyone instead of host, just hosts and panelists. So everyone, all of the attendees can see. Right. Thanks, Brooke. We're here to learn from one another as well. Absolutely. Because I'm sure you guys are out there doing great things already. And we want to hear what you are, what you guys are already doing. So, okay. So back to the website. So WordPress I have on here. We bleed Blumenthal, Squarespace, Shopify, right? So there's a whole bunch of different types of website builders. Um, right. Do not use websites. Okay. Okay, so we're gonna encourage the use of social media here to in, in order to, um, we only use Facebook. Okay, well, that's fine. You're using something, right? So why is it important that you come up when you're doing um, website searches? So um, website optimization is a search engine optimization or website, it, which is the process of making changes to your website so that it will appear higher in the search engine results. So now that we have our website and you have your website built, if you have one, right? Now we want our websites to come up. So we want to make sure that it's optimal and it's in your, it's fast and it's user friendly when you're actually bringing um, people to your website. So are you even coming up in Google searches? And how do you know if your website's even mobile optimized? Meaning, is it compatible with when people are opening it using their mobile phone? You also want to know if, if it's easy to navigate and is it legible? I got ahead of myself right here. Because actually your website is the face of your business. And why is this so important? Because a lot of the people nowadays are utilizing the website for search. And a lot of the times that's how they're figuring out where you are and who you are. So we wanna make sure that you're coming up in these searches and it's website and you're mobile optimized. Um, so why is this important? Why do you think website optimization is even important? So when people, you bring um, people to your website, you want to look at your website as if you were a parent uh, looking online and what would you be looking for, okay? So think about your messaging from the point of view from a parent. So what would, you ma what would make you want to send your child to, the, to your place of business by looking at your website? And if you're promoting it through Facebook, I mean it's going to have a different look. Um, so you're really not going to look at a Facebook page and say, wow, I really want to send my child here. But there's different things that you can add into the Facebook page, such as the sharing of photos um, and not necessarily of kids. It can just be of your place. It can be quotes. It can be your, um, your mission statement, all different things that can be attractive to uh, people looking at what you have to offer. Um, at your place. Even thinking about asking your younger staff, if you have younger staff, what their opinion is about, the, about your website and asking clients what made them choose you. Did you actually, how did you find me? Did you do a search, you know, and asking them actually how they uh, located you. So I'm just going to stop share for a second and I want to share a different um, yeah. All right, here we go. Yeah, and while you're pulling that up, Brooke, someone said in the chat, um, every time they have a new family, um, they always ask how they heard about us. Great. Actually, um, when I used to give tours to new families coming in, I kind of had like a checklist of things that I would go through. And that was a question on my checklist, like, how did you hear about us? 
And so that's, that's really important that you ask. Um, so when I was a director, I used to work for Kinder Care Learning Center. It was a corporate owned business. Um, but what's nice about their website, it's very aesthetically pleasing to the eye. So it has bright colors. They have children of all different ethnic backgrounds. Um, they have a little map showing where they can be located. They actually have, you could put your zip code in here. Um, and then this is my area where I live. So it brings up the, um, the different centers in the area. Not all websites are gonna look like this. I just think that this is aesthetically pleasing. So I like to bring up having like a page um, that's bright and colorful and not too wordy, right? So you'll have a little bit of words where you could see right here. And then you can have a live chat. And then you can also, there's a place that you can actually look to, I think, for, to click for more information. Um, but a lot of the times when I'm going through and looking at different people's websites, it's too text heavy. And a lot of the times it's too much for people to look at and they will click off your site. So you have to kind of take that into consideration um, as well. Okay, oops. So now we're, what we're gonna find out, we wanna know how, um, whether your website is optimized and whether it's friendly. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this site into the chat box and we're gonna give you the opportunity and I'm gonna, I'm gonna show, go right along with you and show you how to do it. Okay, so Alyssa put that in. Um, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna click on that link. And so I'm gonna stop share again, I apologize. And then I'm gonna go to the website, which is right here. And I'm gonna put in our place of business, but this is where you're gonna put in yours. So this is where you're gonna enter in your website. And hit enter. And it's going to take a moment. It's just interesting to see how fast your website is working, um, whether it's optimized or not. And of course, this site, Google will charge for um, to get the extended version. Hey, Brooke, while that's loading, do you have any suggestions on what um, an easier website developer would be for um, some of these providers? We have someone um, asking about that. I don't have any necessarily, I don't have any suggestions to that necessarily, but if you need more additional information, um, I can give you that. So, sorry, I just have a generic type of website builders. Um, not social media site, it's a web, the website and how to build your own website. I know what you're recurring, referring to for social media on how to um, organize all your social media posts, but we're not gonna talk about that. But if you want more information, I will give out my um, email at the end of this training and you can email me directly and um, I can see where I can find you. So this is um, our Early Care and Learning Council's page. We come up as poor. So it's, it's saying that it's taking 4.4 seconds to pull everything up. So that's not good. So this site right here will give you ways on how to boost your speed. And of course, the way Google works is they will charge you to get like the more extensive version of this. Um, but it will, what you can do is if this, if you don't have ownership to the site, you have an opportunity to get your full report. See right here, you can get your full report. Um, you can email this to the person that um, takes care of your website so they can see um, how optimized your website really is. Um, or you can email this to your, your own site. 
and then you could test it on their site if you want. So right here it's saying, I'll just review this really quickly. So improving our load time by 0.1 of a sec, 0.1 of a second can boost conversion rates by over 8%. So it's obviously we want to boost our speed on our website. Um, and then it's saying right here, people are 40% more likely to spend more than planned when they identify the shopping experience to be highly personalized. So it's saying that's pretty much saying they're going to spend more time on your site the faster it is. This is just another statistic, 77% of smartphone shoppers are more likely to purchase from companies whose mobile sites or apps allow them to make purchases quickly. So if they can get to, the, if they can get to what they're looking for quicker, they're gonna stay on and you're bound to get more drive, more traffic to your website, which hopefully will then bring in either if you're recruiting new staff or if you're trying to get more children to your center, that can drive that. So that's why it's important. Do we have any questions in the chat? We're all set, Brooke. Okay. Yes, yeah, so, okay, I see that if you want to. All right, so that's why website optimization is, is important. So now we're gonna talk a little bit about Google Ads. It used to be called Google AdWords, um, and now it's Google Ads. Google Ads is an online advertising platform developed by Google, where advertisers bid to display brief advertisements, service offerings, product listings, or videos to web users. It can place ads both in the results of search engines like Google Search and also on non-search websites such as mobile apps and videos. So as you can see in the picture down here, AdWords come up here, but we're gonna have you search for your own site. So what we're gonna do is you're gonna go to um, the Google search engine, either on your phone or in your computer. And what you're gonna do is Sorry about that you're gonna bring up the area that you work. So in, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna Google search childcare in Albany, New York. Can you see that screen with the internet, Alyssa? Yep. Okay. So if you look to the left, oh, there's kinder care. The word AD, the ad right there, they're actually paying for their name and their center to come up first in the search. So these two people, these two businesses are paying for their names to come up. So one's in Niskuna and one's in Cohoes. So outside areas. So not even directly in Albany. So say there was a daycare center in Albany that wanted to come up first in a search you would then apply for a Google ad and your, your, um, your facility, your, your, your care would come up. So let's see, um, what other areas do we have? You wanna type in your areas and I can do a search really quick. If you weren't able to do it yourself, if you use the chat box. Nanoet. Can't type today. Let's see what comes up. All right, so one place is a paying for a Google ad, which is Primrose School of Paramus, and that's in Nanoet. Then all the other ones come up. Why is this important? Why do you think that having your um, your facility or your place of business pop up first? Does anybody have a guess why this could be important? Yeah. 
because people are typically right. People are typically going to click on the first thing that pops up. The percentage is like really, it's like it's above 90% the people click on the first thing that pops up. They want fast answers. They're not going to keep scrolling down. It's going to, and they're automatically going to think the best is on top. That's just how they're. So, exactly. So, they're not going to keep looking down the list. They're going to just click, click right there. So Google ads is easy as one, two, three. You decide what you want to advertise. So obviously you're going to try to be advert. You're going to advertise your place of business. Um, you're going to create a message or you're going to put information about your, your business there and you're and you set up your own budget. So what happens with Google AdWords is, or Google ads, sorry, is you're going to pay for the results. You only pay when people click on your site. So when people click on your ad to either call your business, visit your website, and or get directions to your place of business, that's when you're going to be charged. I'm just pulling the chat box to see if there's any questions. No questions, Brooke. People are just typing in, you know, people will call that that first person yeah, I see. Yeah, sorry, mm -hmm. something popped up, so I was just checking it. All good. Um, all right, let's see. You could target your ads to customers in certain countries, cert, um, certain regions or cities, um, or within a set distance from your business or store. So you can you could choose how far out, how many miles out from your place of business you wanna do the search for. Um, and this will help obviously new website visitors help grow your online sales and get your phones ringing to try to hopefully bring in some new recruits for new staff members or even um, new enrollments. Brooke, do you so, know how, so, oh, sorry. Yep, go ahead. Yep. I was just gonna say, do so, you know how people apply? Yep, so you would just obviously Google search, Google ad grants um, and they will provide um, the Google ad grants will determine whether you're qualifying or not. So you'll have to put in your information to, de um, to determine whether you're qualified. Mainly it's all nonprofit. Um, and while many organizations won't need anywhere near that amount, well, they can give up to 10,000. Um, these grants will provide um, the drive to help increase your organization, reach your goal. So you'll be able to like, I think within the paperwork, you write what your goal is. Like if you're looking to recruit say 20 children, or if you're looking to recruit 10 new staff um, and then like, you'll fill out some information in that. There, it's like a form that you'll fill out. And the thing about Google ads is typically it's free. Um, I don't know how much it is per click because the numbers just went up a little bit. So. Um, I can get you that information after. I don't have that, the newer number. I don't want to give you a number that's, that's old, um, but it's not a lot. It's not a lot. And you could set your own budget. You could say, okay, I want to have, I can afford $50 of Google ads for the month and they will work with you. So whatever's within your budget, you could start, you could start low. And if you're seeing a lot more, um, you know, traffic from this, you can increase it, which is great. Um, so um, so like I said, you could set your own budget and so your cost will depend on what you're trying to accomplish. So you don't always have to have it going. Like if you're, say you're just looking for, you know, a couple new staff members for this month and then you could stop the ads. So you have control of when you want to start and stop the ad, the ads. Um, and like it said, um, some businesses can spend tens of thousands of dollars a month and other are comfortable in investing maybe a hundred maybe 50. So it totally depends. Do we have any other questions on Google ads? Um, I can get back to you on how much it is per click. I don't have that. No, nope, you're welcome. So I want to hear from you guys. What exactly are you using your website for? 
So type in the chat, what are you using your website for? Mark, as folks are um, typing in the chat, do you have any um, suggestions on, um, as, as a child care program who's in a small rural area, is there an advantage to having a website versus just having a Facebook business page? I just think that you'll a lot of you'll come up um, you'll come up better in searches through the website than you will on Facebook. Mm -hmm. So anybody can just type into Google and search, right? So if they're Google searching, you'll pop up. But through Facebook, not everybody has Facebook either, right? And not everybody is utilizing Facebook to look for that. Typically, we see a lot of programs using Facebook for parent groups or from or like my my son's daycare has a Facebook group. It's private and only parents that attend can um, be members. And then that's where they'll post pictures and activities and promote different things that, you know, that's going on at the, the center. Um, so it's not as uh, public. Um, so. I think it limits um, access to people looking for you. And just what some folks are saying in the chat about um, what they use their website for um, advertisement, for parents to see activities, general information, inviting people to call, promoting the program, enrollment, um, parents can apply online, uh, pricing for each age group, uh, location, and um, Someone's saying our fa their Facebook is, is used for information and for family activities. Right. Okay. So all great. I mean, you're, they're, you're using your websites for what they need to do, right? So obviously, you know, you're going to want to market your business through your website. So that's one idea. Also, it's an informational hub. So this is where you're gonna be giving folks information about what you do, um, who you are, the children you serve, your hours of business. This is all this basic information that can kind of reduce them from calling you at the center and wasting your time if this information's already for them on the site. The basic information that they need. Do you have openings? Sometimes that's where they'll have to call because you can't always update and, and say, yes, we have openings unless, you know, you have somebody manning that website all the time and, and really going into there and updating, seeing openings available in these ages. That's where you'll say, please call to see about openings. But for the basic general information, you could have the, all that posted on your website. So it's your information hub. If this also, you're promoting your own business, right? You can also promote there if you're looking to hire new people. You can also promote if you need enrollment, if you have, if you have spots available, if you have a summer program that's coming up, right? This is the time now that you can promote your recruiting children for summer program. Okay. How do you market your business? So in what ways are you marketing your own business other than the website, right? So the website's an option. Okay, I take that back. But how exactly are you promoting your own business? I wanna hear that. So use the chat. Does the updating the website improve the SEO? So again, what else are you marketing on your website? Someone said they also use their website for fundraising, direct appeals, and job advertisements. Yep, that's good. Um, they promote their business by sharing their philosophy and daily activities, um, community involvement, Facebook. Someone partners with other local businesses for events and activities. It's great. 
So what are other ways that you're promoting promoting other than the website? How are you promoting your business? Say you don't have a website. How are you promoting yourself? Okay, you put an advertisement in a local circular that goes to the community, great. Flyers, posting them at local businesses, flyers, good. Amusement parks, local restaurants, so flyers. Yep, I know that there's a bunch of people housed in the Monterey School, so that's always good. Word of mouth, that's exactly what I'm getting. That's what exactly I'm looking for as well. Happy Flyers. parents. Yeah. Yep, exactly, it is. <laughs> parents, you know, that word of mouth, if they're satisfied, they're going to be, you know, letting out their parents know. Referrals, exactly. That's exactly what I was looking for as well. Parent referrals. We also did staff referrals at my, my place that I used to work at. If you're looking for staff, you recruit a new staff member, but there's also a little catch there. You know, they have to, the, the new family and or staff had to be there for a month. And then we used to give, um, we used to give one free, we used to do one free week of tuition after a month and both family, uh, the referring family would get that. And then for the staff, we used to give gift cards. So the staff stayed there for um, a month after that, the, the, referral, the referring staff member would get a gift card. We offer a free week for a signed contract. Nice, great. Okay, host, yep. So you would host family events and bring the community in, at, to your site. Awesome. So ways to market your business. Of course, we talked, we talked about Facebook. So Facebook is a way. obviously your own website you're marketing your business google um yelp linkedin these are just different ways these are diff different avenues on um, online that you can market your business but we also would like to include word of mouth um the newspaper if people still use this newspaper or the flyers you have apparel so if anybody wears your sweatshirt outside of work hours on weekends, you have your, you know, your site with your name and your, you know, your email, phone number or email. Um, I saw a lot of these people putting this stuff in fundraising events. I saw that in the chat uh, referrals. And also I had down television and radio events. So I'm not sure if you mentioned there. this one, someone um, said they, um, they do some advertising in a doctor office, doctor's offices. Awesome. Yep, I had somebody in my one of my trainings that used to make little bags to give to the um, moms that just had um, new babies. So it just had like had their logo on it, and it had like a like a little um, toy, um, some information about the site, um, and just a little bag to give to new moms. So you know, depends on your funding there as well. So now we're going to switch gears and I want to know how, how are you recruiting these new employees that you're searching for? What are ways that you guys are currently recruiting for new employees? I like that in the Facebook and Indeed. Yep, Indeed's a good one. That's what a lot of people use that. Indeed wasn't successful. So it, it's a hit or miss, right? In certain areas. Telling friends and family and neighbors about open positions. Good, your local DSS, or this is where you can utilize your child care resource and referral agency. You can also um, contact your licensor. And sometimes OCFS has po can post and send things out saying uh, about certain uh, facilities that are, are in need of hiring. So that's another thought. Facebook, okay, you apply through Facebook, recruit through, face, through Facebook. Indeed is getting expensive. I heard that um, local Facebook help wanted pages. Does anybody use the newspaper anymore? We used to do that, newspaper ads, they were expensive, but I, I mean, I think those, not a lot of people use that. We used to post things, um, I don't know if anybody knows about parent pages. We used to get these parent pages at our site and it just had everything re related to all early education. Um, and we used to post things in there as well. 
we had a, we participated in CACFP. And so we kind of like um, promoted ourselves through that as well. Newspaper only. Oh, the online version of newspaper. Yes, I know. That is a, that is an option. Craigslist. Great. Somebody also said local colleges and universities. You can post there as well. Yep, perfect. College campuses, students, and early childhood education. Yes, that's a great suggestion. Local restaurants, bulletins. Great. These are all great ideas. You guys are doing it, right? It's like, how are we getting these? How can we get these? And how can we attract these new employees that are out there? You know, you guys have great ideas. Church bulletins. Right. So I'm just going to post what I had. And you guys pretty much said all of them. You know, I have indeed.com, monster.com. Here's um, Career Builder. That's another one that you can go to. Craigslist, Facebook. We said that. Zip Recruiters. Anybody ever heard of Zip Recruiter? Um, Zip Recruiter did that. They can be costly as well, um, but they can look for that. I think ZipRecruiter also had an option of locating all new families with children that moved into the area. So every year we used to use this site who the beginning of the year, like when you're you know, recruiting new families um, and send out, we would send out snail mail, like mail actually a flyer, just giving them information about us if they didn't know who we were and where we were. Um, to all the new families. And a lot of the times, if you didn't want to use that, you can go to a local real estate agent. And sometimes they have that information of people um, who currently just moved are new to the area with children. Um, so that's another thing. And somebody also suggested at one of my trainings that they dropped flyers off to real estate agents as well. LinkedIn is another way to promote your business and all your um your employees, they have a LinkedIn account. I know that when we work for the Early Care and Learning Council, it was encouraged that we all have our own LinkedIn. And then they kind of connected all of us to the Early Care and Learning Council. So um, that was a way that you can kind of promote your staff and your business as well. Glassdoor is another um, option. Upwork, so these are all just suggestions. Yeah, I've seen that too, um, where you can get a little banner, um, such as being uh, at like a little league game on the fence with your with your um, website. Definitely. Stack Overflow. And then obviously I told you about the child care councils, your local child care council can post on their own website as well as within the their buildings. College campuses, the Department of Labor will also post about um, recruiting new, for new employees. Newspapers, word of mouth, employee referrals, parent referrals, we said that. Great. So now we're going to talk a little. Does anybody have any more questions about um, recruiting new staff? You guys had great ideas. These are just additional ways right here. And by the way, at the end of this, we will give you access to the um, PowerPoint. Um, slides. So if you don't have everything written down, you'll be able to come back to this and be able to have everything um, after the training. So now we're going to talk about a little bit about uh, parent communications apps. Does anybody uh, online in that cyberspace that I can't see use parent teacher communication apps? And if so, which ones do you guys currently use? No. Okay. Bright wheel, that's a good one. None, okay. All right. And if you don't, that's okay. Some of them do have a cost to them. Um, never heard of any of these. Okay, well, you can look into this. We can give you more information about any of these. Um, Bright wheel, um, my kid uses, uh, my son's currently has my kid's day. So what happens is um, he's electronically signed in when he comes and then anything throughout the day um, is just jotted down. So the, the teachers don't necessarily even need to have 
um, at like an iPad or, you know, um, a Chromebook or whatever they call whatever they are, you can, they, they can use their phone or a computer. Um, but typically in classrooms, they will have like an iPad or um, so what are the other ones called? Not the Chromebook, the brain freeze, but you know what it's I'm like talking about. It's like a tablet? Tablet. tablet. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I knew that was going to happen to me at one point today. I was like, Got like you, bro. A word, and somebody might have to fill my fill in my sentence. Total mom brain here. So. Anyway, um, if they have a tablet, and what will happen with the tablet is, um, we'll just instead of using a paper version, which when I was a daycare director, we had paper versions of, you know, like what time they came in, what they ate, you know, when they were changed. Um, yep. So exactly. So you can do it through your cell phone. But what's nice about that is, if you use an app. The parent can log in at any time at their own leisure and, and see what's been going on um, with their child. And like you can update at the end saying, you know, what they enjoy doing for the day. Um, it's also great to track milestones, um, especially if you end up doing assessments for your children. It kind of tracks everything for you in a sense. Um, and what's nice is like if, you know, it's chaotic upon pickup and you forget to tell the parent the last time the child ate or had a bottle or did they have a bowel movement for that day and you forgot to tell the parent the parent can go into the app and look themselves so this is actually creating less communication on your end if they were had to call you back or like that so if you forgot something to say then they can just always go to the app and check with the app you have to put, uh, to input it into the app correct right so what will happen is you'll just like um when you set it up you create a classroom, right? So you're creating every child that will have like their own page, so to speak. And you just click on the child's name and input the information in. And sometimes uh, parents can set it up when they're inputting the information, they'll get a notification. Like when my, when my child eats lunch, I get a notification on my phone that says, Brady ate uh, chicken nuggets, applesauce, and he ate it all today. So it's like, okay, he ate. Then I get that, then I'll get another one. Oh, Brady fell asleep at 1.30. And then me and my husband are like, oh no. We're like, oh no, he's taking a nap today. He's never going to sleep tonight. He's going, going to be five like next month. So when he takes a nap, he is up all night. So we were like, every time we get that nap notification, we're like, oh no, we're going to be up till midnight tonight. So. <laughs> Brooke, do you, know if, um, do you know if any of these apps on tools are free? Um. They're not, there might be parts of them that are accessible for free, but there's typically a charge. And I know that there are some sites that will um, um, give a discount for nonprofits. I don't have that list, but I know that you can get them for discounted. Um, so just take a look. I mean, it's just, it will, there will be a cost, um, but sometimes it takes a lot of um, that paper trail off if you're doing papers. Or, oh yeah, there's parts of Dojo I think that are free too, I, I, I believe. Um, so here's the list, jot them down and just take a look. Um, and they're great. It's just another way to transition to that online version of what these millennial families, these um, you know millennial moms and families out there are looking for. They want easy access, they want quick answers and it'll make your life a lot easier in the end because you know, say you're you leave earlier than your assist than your you know and the assistant teacher's there and wasn't there in the morning to really say oh my god you know brady was crying all morning how did he calm down you know sometimes there's that lack of communication so through this app through the apps you know it'll reduce that and you'll be able to answer parents and there's actually um through my kids on my kids day i can communicate through the app with the with the teacher so it'll like, it'll like send them an email. And then when they still re respond, like, you know, when the kids obviously go down for nap because they don't want to be too much, you know, having their backs turned to the kids. Um, but, you know, it does take a little bit of time to adjust. And once that adjustment time is, um, you have to kind of figure out the, the great, the good times to when to use these apps. Cause you know, you could sit down during nap time and actually fill everything out, so. Or as, if it's quick, you just put it in there. 
Brooke, so with these apps, um, do the the parents have to make an account as well with like the same app? Yeah, right? so a lot of the times you'll just go to the app store and download um, the app that they're that you're going to be using at your site. Um, and then what will they'll do is um, they'll download it on their own phone and just set up set up their account. And that's free for parents. Like there's not there's not a charge. And a lot of the times, what some um, providers have been doing is they've been rolling that additional charge that they're, that they're getting charged to use these into tuition. So when you're doing tuition increasements, if, you're do, if you do tuition increasements at the beginning of the year, um, they just roll in. Cause I think it, some of them break down to be like, I don't know, like maybe $5 a kid a month. And so they would take that $5 extra and um, add that in. So ultimately the increase the tuition increase would pay for it. So it's another way you could do it. Okay, so there's a question in the box and it says, does anyone use an app or technology to accept tuition payments? Um, this is something we've been looking into for a few years and there is a large cost or percentage per transaction. Just curious. Yeah, and that's funny that you said that because I just went to my daycare provider and I was like, I wish you could pay online. And she's like, yeah, we haven't gotten there yet because of that reason. Um, so she's like, we're considering it, but there's a large fee that they're going to be getting. Yep, they use ProCare, and there is a fee for ProCare through ProCare. Offering Venmo, yep, that's an option. Cash app, right? So that's another way that you got that you can get money. You set up a cash app, Venmo through your, you know, for your um, business, and allow parents to send payment in that way. Otherwise, cash or check. Yep. All right. You do through Brightwheel. There's a large fee for credit cards, but only sixty cents through check. Yep. So it is. Yep, that's exactly right. So I could utilize through the checking account, but a lot of the times, a lot of people won't have checking accounts. So um, not everyone has a checking account. So we have to be creative here. But if you can, you can. If it's if it's too costly because they charge you for that tr credit card transaction, then it's just something you don't offer. You know, you stick with how you're accepting payments. And then, like I said, if you decide to use the communication app, you just don't offer that, you know, that option to be able to charge. Okay. Do we have any more questions about parent and uh, teacher communication apps? And I, you know, the only downside of the electronic versions are that lack of verbal communication, right? That, that communication that we're used, so used to having, um, that's what it's kind of taking away. Um, but when I pick up my son at night, both his teachers are gone for the day. So, and a lot of the times the, when he goes into the next classroom, they don't really know how his day was. So I'd rather have this than not have anything. So, but if you're a group, fam or group family or family provider and you're there from open to close, I mean, you might not necessarily find this useful, but it is nice to have all electronic. Exactly. So you prefer the face to face. And of course, if, if that's your option, that's fine. It's whatever works best. But a lot of the times when I do trainings um, as well, I'll say you, you're going to want to think of what type of um, learning style or communication style does your families and even your children have and your staff, right? Are those the visual learners? Are they auditory learners? Or are they kinesthetic hands-on? So that's why we always wanna know, have more than one option because somebody might not be a visual learner and somebody might need to have something in hand. So we wanna give more than one way on how we're offering things. So this is another way of like, okay, if you give a piece of paper, um, to a family and let them know, yes, this is what my child did for the day. And if somebody's like, oh my God, this piece of paper is a waste. I don't want the paper. I would have families throwing the papers out in the garbage on their way out the door. You know, this is where they would rather have the digital. 
So it's just thinking outside the box and how to really accommodate to the different types of learning styles and the different um, generational gap generations that we have within our within our care, the, the parents and the children. I'm not really sure uh, about the auditor from DSS, so that would be something that you would probably have to talk to your licensor about. Oops, sorry about that. So photo sharing. So here's another thing about what, how you can promote, and this is not just promoting outside your business, but this is promoting what, what you're doing that's great in your center to the families that go there. So here's different um, ways that you can share photos throughout the day. So we have Instagram, we have Shutterfly, we have SkyDrive, we have all these different um, photo sharing apps that you can use. And what, and remember when you're doing photo sharing, obviously you're gonna wanna get a photo permission slip and you're gonna keep those in the child's folder in order to post any pictures on sites or to share photos to this because you're going to be able to you can create a photo sharing um, business app like for your business um, so you could create a Instagram for your business for, per se and then you would allow you would be friends with um, parents at your site that parents at your your within your care and they would have access to the pictures. So you would want to make sure that parents know that might not be their children's, all the children at your facility. Um, and then they'll have all access. And what, but the great thing about photo sharing is, say you upload a whole bunch of all of your photos to Shutterfly, parents can log into Shutterfly and click on the pictures they like and they can have it printed and sent directly to them. So that's nice too, because a parent, Parents are missing a big chunk of the day of their children when they're at work. So what's nice is that they're gonna have these options of being able to select if there's photos that had been taken every day or you know for the week and they could print a few. And then the thing to keep in mind is you're gonna wanna change the password every so often because if you have parents that have left or staff members that have left that had access to this, um, you wanna just, keep the privacy to the group that it's that you really have currently at your within your care. Does anybody use these photo sharing um, apps with their families? Instagram, great. Great, thank you, yeah. So it's just another way of promoting, you know, the good things you're doing. You can even say, you know, if you were having events, you post pictures of the events and um, Google photos for teachers to share with teachers and then make them exactly right. And that's another thing that teach, you could um, have like different groups within Shutterfly because, you know, you could just label it differently. Like, you know, you could have different books and each classroom can have their own. Um, And then they would upload photos all to their own page, you know, to their own um, group name and be able to print those books out at the end. You can also email parents photos, yes. Okay, through Messenger, okay, through Facebook Messenger, you can send photos as well. Yep, definitely including photos in your newsletters is a great idea. Great. So you guys are also sharing photos. Good thing. Good things. So next I'm going to talk about SMS or text alerts. Does anybody know what text alerts are? Does anybody use text alerts? As a reminder, correct. What can text alerts be used for? So this is when a mass, you can send out a text to anybody whose cell phone numbers that you have and they will get an alert. 
Um, so what types of alerts could you send emergency situations, correct? Such as like maybe a school closing early. What are other types of alerts that can be that can be used for? Um, fire drills, okay, there was a fire, right. Remind parents of the meeting, schedule changes. If you had, say you had a, a change into your, um, say you provide food and you had a menu change. Some parents really like to know about the menu changes. There's shelter in place or sickness, great. So exactly, so these are the main things that you can send out a mass text to everybody within your care um, to get an alert. Um, and that's instead of you picking up the phone or you emailing everybody and you don't have everybody's email um, and letting them know. So I saw, oh, those are the different sites that can be used. So I, I would say, you know, weather alerts, you know, snow closings, um, illnesses, school closings, lockdowns, right? So these are all the different, the different alerts that can be used. So some sites that we have the, that you can utilize, and there are some free and there are some that you can pay for, um, but I know a bunch of these are free. Uh, Care.com does a text alert grouptexting.com, mobiletextalert.com, mobile alerts, textmarks.com, rained out. So these are all different options. Telefio.com. So the only downfall is you need to have everyone's cell phone, cell phone number. But this is also something that can be added to your enrollment form. Do you authorize to be added to text alerts? Yes or no? and can um, please provide your updated cell phone. And if you have their cell phone number, you just enter all the numbers that you need and you can send out a mass communication. It's really gonna cut down on saving your time. You will, I do suggest using an alternative form of communication as well, just in case. One call will do text, okay, great. Text, emails, and calls. So one call, there's, there's others I don't have on here. It was just a few options, but yes. You guys have any other ones that you guys use or know of that it, that's not on the list? Um, you can also have uh, text groups for staff and they can be used to remind staff of upcoming meetings, closing dates, et cetera. <clears throat> You could do both. You can use a phone or you can do set it up through uh, a computer. There was a chat. So I know that a lot of the times, um, you know, directors and providers are using your own cell phone. And sometimes you have parents calling you on weekends when it's your time off and it's, you know, you can't really kind of um, turn your phone off in a sense, right? So do you know that you can set up a Google Voice phone number for free? And especially if you only have maybe one line um, for your business, this can op add an option to, be to bring in another line. So I have two phone lines coming into your business. So it's easy, it's free, you can get it done in seconds. You must have a Gmail um, address. And if you don't, you could set up a Gmail and, you know, the Gmail address quickly. And you can select, you put in your own phone number. So what will happen is the phone, it'll access your own, your phone. But what will come, they won't have your phone number. They're going to get a different phone number and it's going to drive the calls to your number. But you'll be able to see the phone calls coming in. It'll kind of pop up. Um, on the, the caller ID um, that it's coming through Google Voice. So you'll be able to kind of decipher if it's business or personal related, especially on um, like weekends when you're, you're, you're off. Um, 
This is also for businesses that can't afford a second line and for anyone that wants to keep your personal number private. So it's something that we kind of was like, oh my God, that's awesome. You could uh, have a Google voice phone number and not have to give out your own cell phone number. So the website on the bottom is the voice.google.com. And that's where you can learn more about getting a free Google voice phone number. Well, if you just had an additional phone, you might, you could try it out, see if you like it and then get rid of it, right? You never know. It's great. People don't know about these. So now we're going to kind of switch gears and talk a little bit more about um, Facebook. Um, and I know that it's more popular nowadays and a lot of people are accessing um, Facebook. Um, you're using Facebook to promote your business. But I, would, I kind of like, when I typically do this in person, I talk about the pros and cons of Facebook, right? So let's talk about pros. What are the pros to utilizing Facebook for your business? And let's access the chat box. What are the pros about Facebook? Big audience, correct. A lot of people are using it, right? Easy to post. People can share your posts, exactly, right? You can drive that, the share and kind of promote what you want. It's easy, right? Share photos on there and have parents engage, right? It's free, exactly. It can be private or public. Interactive. Great. So, right. So the pros is you there's over 1 billion users on Facebook, right? So you're having a, you have a large audience. You can custom design your own page in a sense, right? So you can kind of have it, the picture, your logo, on the side, you can have specifics about you know your um, place of business um it's accessible information you can provide um provide analytics on like yep, you can promote your own your daycare you know what you should always do and if you have a website this is a lot of the times people forget to do this you always want to make sure you're linking your website to your facebook a lot of like oh i didn't think about that but you want to drive that traffic actually to your to your website because your website is going to host all of your information about yourself about about your place of business. Yep, it's going to potential clients, show business hours, exactly. You can do all that. So it's pretty much advertising your your business for you. It promotes posts. You could share community things in there, you know what I mean? So it doesn't have to be just about, um, you know, what you're doing, it'd be all in the community, you're bringing the community together, community events. I know we talked about that earlier. So there's a personal Facebook, which we like to say, you know, our staff and everybody, we kind of keep that separate, right? So we have a personal Facebook, we have a business Facebook. And then of course we have the business groups. So you can have a group Facebook, or the parent pages, the parent groups. So there's all these different types of Facebooks that you can have. And remember that you always wanna check the privacy settings on all of these pages, on all these Facebook pages. Because if you're trying to draw traffic in, if you're recruiting new staff or recruiting new enrollments, you're not gonna have your privacy settings set at private because you're not really getting to the wider audience, right? But on those parent pages, and those business groups, you're going to have those private settings up there because this is where you're allowing the specific audience members in. And this is where maybe when you have those photo um, sharing opportunities, you could post there as long as you have the permission. What are some cons about Facebook? What are the cons?
Okay, yep. So parents taking children's photos. That's why we don't want to really post photos on a um on the sites that aren't private. Some parents don't like it, get nervous about it. Yep. You can allow family members into your private pages as, as well, though. They can. You can have the parents listed, and you can allow them in if they if they're utilizing uh, Facebook for you know to be able to see the pictures being shared. But you just want to be careful with the sharing of the photos like that. Discussions. Yep, you can have heated discussions between parents and or staff. So right, um, you're tagged by others. What if you, I have heard from other people saying that people give bad reviews and then you have a bad review stuck on your, your page because, you know, maybe you had somebody, a disgruntled employee leave and they left a review and those bad reviews stick, right? So, and not everybody uses Facebook, right? Also, it's, it takes time and a lot of resources to keep your Facebook updated on a, you know, if not on a daily basis, weekly basis. Um, it's actually the voice of your company and it takes commitment to use Facebook to promote your business. So it's time and energy, right? And anything with social media, it's going to take time. So one thing that I like to talk about, and not everybody has these, but it's having social media policies within your facilities. Um, if you are a group family, family, you know, if, if you don't have any other employees working for you, maybe the information here is more relevant, you know, just more relevant to know. Uh, but if you have um, people working for you, it's always good to have a social media policy. Um, so I'll just, I'm going to go through these. Once, once information is re released into cyberspace, it's gone for net forever and it can never be retrieved. It can be copied, passed on to hundreds of people in a fraction of a second. So if you accidentally post something, you didn't mean to post it, the likelihood of you thinking that nobody saw it, somebody's seeing it, right? So you have to be very cognizant of what you're posting and that it's not going to um, upset anybody, right? You may think social media posts are private, but they're never private. They can be copied by your friends and passed on to people you don't even know. Protect confidential information at all times. Never post any information about a staff member, organization, child, or family involved in your care, either by name or by any other descriptive nature on any social media site ever. And that's protecting your own self and your business. This includes positive as well as negative comments. Play it safe, keep it neutral, no names. There is a good reason for having a social media policy. What may seem like an innocent pat on the back to a family for handling maybe a difficult medical situation, for example, could be a HIPAA violation made far more serious by the broad dispersion of information using social media. Not even thinking of, oh, you know, they did a good job, but wait, I just broke the HIPAA violation. Example, so as your employer, this is example policy. As your employer, we reserve the right to review sites to ensure adherence to this policy. Violation of this policy are grounds for disciplinary, including the possibility of dismissal. <coughs> Uh, actually, I had a staff member working for me. She was friends with me on Facebook. Excuse me. She had, get, she had gotten ran up for tardiness. And um, I, I kind of let her go twice. And then the third time she got written up. And literally she got into her room and she made a post on Facebook. And during my lunch hour, I saw the, her Facebook post. It didn't say my name, but I knew exactly what she was talking about. She was talking about me. And ultimately she lost her job because she posted about, she posted about me on Facebook complaining about the person she works for. She claimed it wasn't for me, but it was. And because we had a social media policy, um, I was able to terminate, 
terminate her position because you can't have people doing that because she was not only friends with me, but she's friends with parents and she's friends with other staff members. So that's why we always encourage, like after that, like I could not be friends with anybody else on Facebook. <laughs> so when you're the boss, it's like, um, I actually moved up in my position. So I was an assistant director. So I was one of them, right? And then I moved to their boss. So I had a, there was a thin line between assistant director and director. And I had to like remove all of the um, employees that were my friends. Um, so you can't really be friends with people, but and you could suggest that as well to your teachers, if you have teachers or staff, um, but they are going to be friends with the parents, right? And a lot of the times, I know we had a staff member that said, I had the worst day ever. Oh my God. Um, you know, talk about how bad her day was. And a parent at my site said, oh my God, I hope Jared didn't do anything bad today. Can you believe that mother thought that her child did something bad to this? This is why we encourage not to have parents or staff members being friends with parents on Facebook, because they don't know if they're talking about your child or not. That was like horrifying that a parent would think that this teacher was talking about her day was bad because of that child. We don't want that. So that's why it's also good um, to have these social media policies. Yep, you have to be careful of predators, right? So what's also really good to think about um, to share on your website as we're thinking about social media is making sure you're sharing your mission, mission statement. And we talked about that earlier, mission statement. Sharing videos, parents love to see videos. I know that um, my daycare just went through and they had this topic. Um, my son goes to a Christian daycare. So, you know, with Easter coming, they did all these activities for, you know, for Easter coming up. And they went to every classroom. They didn't just do one classroom. Every classroom had a video, which was nice. So think about, yeah, if you're sharing a video, it's great, but making sure parents will say, oh, I wish I could see a video of my child. So making sure it's universal, right? Um, sharing milestones. So even if it's just like your five-year anniversary, you being in business, or if it's somebody's birthday, like sharing birthdays, anniversaries, anything like that, um, holidays, awareness days, you know, um, we used to do every day, you know, how like you could search every day is a holiday. So every day there's something to celebrate. So you could search up every day, a holiday calendar, and then you could bring up and have something to post there. Like today is National Dog Day, whatever. Like you can just post something about that. So you'll have something to post if you're looking to drive more <clears throat> people to your site and having something to post every day. I got ahead of myself again. Um, sharing photos, I talked about that. Sharing news from related organizations, we all talked about that. Um, linking it to your website, that's a lot. That's a lot of things. Um, People do not link their website um, onto Facebook. So remember to do that because it's gonna drive them to your website. And this is where you're also gonna wanna share superior customer service stories. Um, we used to promote, because um, not a lot of parents um, would like create these like nice thoughtful um, comments other than like teacher appreciation week. And we really wanted to create these comments coming in all year round. So we would have a con we would have a contest like submit your you know your customer service um, story or your you know aha moment or your you know heart to heart moment you had this week and if they submitted their name would be put in like a little drop box we would have these little stories or these little um, paragraphs to be shared onto our website and then at the end of the month we would pick a name and that parent could win a gift card or something off. So we just try to drive that fun aspect into it and really get these customer service stories that we wanna share with others. Cause we are doing good work out there. And a lot of the times parents tend to share what we're not doing right, right? So we really wanna encourage them sharing stories about what we are doing right. And not just during teacher appreciation week. We wanna hear these comments all year round. Great. 
great. So a parent made a testimonial for our website about how we continued at the beginning of COVID. Was that a good testimonial, Kathy? Great, great, awesome. Right, so you want to hear these testimonials and when you get them, this is what you can post on your website or even Facebook, right? Encourage them to post these testimonials on Facebook as well. Oops, I gotta. Um, and then you can create photo albums as well. So here's the do's and don'ts of social media, right? So this is what we wanna know what to do and what not to do. So what to do. So obviously you're gonna fill out all the information about your business, making sure your logo, if you have ones there and you're adding photos. You're gonna balance your promoting yourself with helpful and entertaining content. So not just you're not just gonna post information, pictures and whatever. You wanna promote yourself and your business as well as the entertaining content. So there has to be a, a balance. Be active, but don't overdo it. I know y'all can think of somebody on Facebook that posts every time they go to the bathroom or every, you know what I mean? Like there are so many people out there that just over post. It's like, oh, that makes you like not want to look. I like, I like unfollow some of my friends because they post way too much, right? And so I know that there's other people out there that are saying they're probably the same thing. Like, oh my God, they're posting too much. I can't, I can't, it's too much. So there has to be, don't, you want to be active with posting, but don't overdo it. Making sure that you're saying thank you and answering questions. So if somebody makes a comment about your about you, such as you know how a parent made a testimonial, thanking them on the site, or if somebody has a question, answering their questions online. Because a lot of the times people will scroll through and see these questions, and they want to see the response. They want to know the answer. So you want to want to make sure that you're answering them as well. Be helpful. Create a positive experience. You want to create a positive experience on your website and your Facebook and include a comment when sharing. So don't just throw a picture up there and just be like, here's a picture for the day. No, explain what you're doing, why you did it. They want to know the why, right? So making sure that you're including a comment when you're sharing something, if it's a quote, if it's a, a picture, anything. Great, so somebody asked to uh, for parents to share a one minute video about what they love about their school and they use those during a virtual open house. Awesome, great idea. Did they like take the video on their phone and then just submit like the video clip to you that way or did they email it to you? How, how were they shared to you? They emailed it, great. So they took, it, they took the video themselves and then emailed it. Okay, so things not to do. What not to do, not completing your page, leaving parts of it open, un, unfinished. This is what you don't wanna do. <laughs> you don't wanna talk about yourself all the time. So you don't wanna talk about everything you're, you're doing, you know, for the kids, this and that. You wanna have a balance. Um, infrequent posting or posting too much, that's what you don't wanna do. So you have to find the happy medium, um, ignoring your follow. So ignoring the, you know, not answering the questions, not saying thank you, not replying to comments. Um, deleting, don't delete the negative comments because you're not perfect. Nobody's perfect out there. And if somebody sees like five star with no, you know, all good reviews and not one bad, they're going to say it's too good to be true. So it's always good to include some of the negative. Um, and then don't forget to provide context. And then there's, of course, other social media platforms out there. Um, there's Twitter, Google+, um, Instagram, LinkedIn, Pinterest. A lot of the times people didn't realize this, but in Pinterest, what you can do is you can add, you can add uh, art activities um to what you're doing with your kids because a lot of times people can google search and pinterest you know like fun um halloween activities per se and you could post um you could post something in pinterest about halloween activity and when they click on the picture to learn more it's going to bring them to your website so this is what you want you want to actually bring these people to your website so through pinterest you could drive that you could drive that 
um, attracted to you. Um, of course, TikTok, my daughter, you know, my teenage daughters live on TikTok, but I've seen where there's other centers that will have their um, staff do a TikTok, you know, with kids music and it's super cute. And it's a video that can be shared on Facebook to bring a smile to parents' faces. So it, it is taking what's popular also on social media and really attracting to that audience that especially, you know, anybody's watching TikTok. So, you know, you can take these videos and bring us some, bring a smile to somebody's face. And then Snapchat, of course, I don't know exactly how you could use Snapchat, but these are just different me social media platforms that are being used right now. So do we have any other questions in regard to um, social media platforms, the etiquette? So pretty much a lot of my information I've provided to you guys, but I wanna know why you guys think that this is important. Why do you think that learning more about social media and learning about all the intricacies of why, you know, Facebook's important and your website. Why is this important to you guys? Why are you on? Why is this, why is this relevant to us now? Exactly, Nancy. This is the way of the future, right? The why is the main way, right? This is kind of, and especially I think COVID Unfortunately, COVID kind of pushed us into that more social media platform. I know that like we do all majority of all of our staff meetings like virtually now, a lot of things is virtual. Um, and the millennials are, are you know, our parents. Um, the millennials can be our staff members um, mixed in with some, you know, Gen X, maybe some boomers in there too. Um, but this is kind of where we're leading to. So this is why it's important because a lot of the times they're gonna be looking on their phone or their computer for ways to, for if there's child care centers um, available for them, what types of jobs are available for them. They're doing this all through social media. So we really have to kind of navigate ways on how we can boost ourselves and our website. Everything is social media, exactly. <laughs> um, and really drive the people that are out there to our business because this is kind of the direction we're going into. And I don't think there's any turning back, especially since COVID. So um, the why is very important because we really want to be with the times and um, the people that are gonna be coming to our business either for care or for employment. So that's all the information I have for you today. I can take a moment to answer a few questions. Um, and then if not, I can definitely, I'll have Alyssa put in my um, email into the chat if you have any questions outside of that. Um, but thank you for attending today. It's been great.